Here we are with Brady Forrest, uh, and uh, he is certainly not new to ETAC or the O'Reilly conferences, but uh, uh, this is uh, Brady's first time that you are actually chairing ETAC, right? Yep. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about ETAC as a conference and about uh, your experience as the person who made it happen. Well, I first went to ETEC in 05, and it just, the conference blew my mind. And since then, we've moved away from the web. We've kind of separated all the, a lot of the web content out into another conference, Web 2.0 Expo, which I also do. So it's very easy for me to draw a line and say, this type of web content will be an expo, and this type, stuff on the fringes, stuff like Ethan Zuckerman's talk on use of web apps and political dissidents, political activism, would be appropriate for eTech. The uh, reason I dwell on that is just because so many people have commented that they're glad Web 2.0 is out of eTech. And that was definitely one of my goals. The things that I wanted to bring into eTech were more like clean tech, with Alex Steffen, Saul Griffith talking about the impact of his life and the way he lives on the earth, uh, bio, so Brainscape, kind of doing a 23andMe for MRIs. Um, Ed Boyden's talk on making synthetic neurobiological interfaces. Uh, really more cutting edge stuff. But then also looking at places where like policy is holding back technology. So we had Lawrence Lessig here last night talking about corruption and how that affects how the corruption in the system affects policy which then in turn affects the products and the technologies that we use. Uh, Pauline Ning gave an amazing talk. She's a principal scientist with the Ventner Institute on the impacts of our DNA being public and how, you know, in the case with the Duke lacrosse players who were accused of rape in North Carolina a couple of months ago, actually they found that their DNA was not on the victim's uh, clothing and it was in fact other gentlemen's and they withheld that evidence. They did not submit it because DNA, I mean, DNA could have proved their innocence against the bias of the prosecuting attorney. So we're looking at all those different areas. You know, in the future, I think we'll continue with sensors and clean tech, but areas that I really want to dive into more are health and Hollywood film. Like, there's a feeling of, like, there's emerging technology in arts and how they all intersect together. So we're trying to that's something I'm going to be ruminating on over the next six to nine months. Uh, there have been international editions of uh, Web 2.0 and uh, uh, they have been very successful. Uh, certainly edge technologies, uh, e-tech related uh, themes uh, emerge uh, not only in the US, uh, even a fairly elitist uh, conference like uh, TED uh, made an African edition. So, uh, do you think uh, eTech could go global too? Ooh, I don't know. Um, you know, it's possible for us it becomes a matter of logistics to go to another country. It's very difficult for us to do that. Uh, with Web 2.0 Expo, there's a lot of, kind of, it's more of a teaching conference. So, say there's about 10 talks in a track for development. Seven five to seven of them will be how to do something. And then some will be case, a couple more will be case studies, and then you'll have some aspirational. Whereas almost all the content here is aspirational. It's one person who could give you this talk. There's nobody else who can do that. Whereas teaching how to build forms in Ajax is something that a lot of people can do. And so it's a matter of crafting, like, what exactly you need to be taught. Whereas here, it's really the intersection of the story and the storyteller. And those people are so tough to nail down. It's, it takes a lot of time. And so we're lucky to get them for a day. Um, certainly looking in uh, from the outside, uh, ETEC was uh, flawless. Uh, no hiccups, even if uh, several talks were uh, delivered. And uh, I'm sure it was very, very complicated from a technical point of view. Um, was it the same from the inside, or uh, oh, yeah, you no, have had every, some horror actually, stories? No, no, things went great. <laughs> things went great. Some people canceled last week, mm -hmm. uh, which was really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. We missed them. I hope they are able to come back next year. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, nobody canceled this week. That was actually amazing. Nobody canceled 
during the conference. Uh, every speaker showed up on time, made their talk, did a great job. Was, we were lucky. Um, some people, of course, uh, wish they could have come and maybe will be coming next year. Uh, are you planning to release uh, the videos of the speeches soon online for people to be able and uh, watch them? So we videoed the keynotes and the Ignite Talks and Tim's and the, e the evening keynotes the other night, and those are going to be up online. Uh, it, it'll happen over the next couple of weeks. It's not something that we have built into the process to release it, much to my chagrin. Uh, I urge it along internally but I don't own that process. Uh, audio, unfortunately, is still not something that we capture on a consistent basis. I think some of the talks were captured, and I'm trying to figure out what to do about that. But it's not something, I so I own, the, it's very, I'm the public face for the conference, along with Tim, and I own the content, but I don't own all the back end. Okay. I, I just have influence over it. Okay, well, I'm sure that uh, even if it's not going to be every piece, uh, even those that uh, have been captured are going to be a, a great uh, um, source of information and inspiration for everybody who will be able and watch it on the web. Thank you very much. Thank you.